helping uh, facilitate the circus this week. And before we get started, I want to I want to introduce our team at GMBC. Um, so I'm going to look around the room. And so Keith Wipasinski, raise your hand or stand up. Keith Wipasinski, and try and spell that. If you can. Oh, round of applause. Keith's our VP of Member Services. Mark McKelsey, our Vice President of Insights and Communications. Mark Rubin, our Vice President of uh, Technology IT. Uh, Brenda Bishop, if this doesn't happen without her, she is our main manager. Our, our latest find, Tom Duffy, our Vice President of Member uh, Development, joined us last week. Mark Saccone, Trey Holder, the co-chairs of our Retail Tomorrow Advisory Council. They are the ones that curate these events. They're the ones that ideate. They're the ones that come up with all the crazy ideas and the, uh, and the content that you can see over the next few days. Um, really happy to have you all here. Uh, before we turn it over and, and talk about specific content, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our sponsors that are helping make this happen. For those of you that are not aware, TMDC is a not-for-profit, member-owned association. Okay, We are owned by our members, and everything we do is in support of our members and based on member needs and, uh, and, uh, and opportunities. So we are a 501c6, and um, our goal in all of our events is to create value for our members, both retailers and brands, to bring people together to look for ways to grow. We don't do anything in a legislative setting at all. Our friends in, in the state capitals and in Washington, D, Washington, D.C. do that for us or for you. Everything we do is about connecting our members to growth. And it's through immersions like this that we hope to do that. We think about the industry changing. The industry is changing rapidly, and, and quite frankly, an epicenter of that change is right here in Seattle. And if we don't change, if we don't think about the change, both within our membership and within GMBC, we're at risk of being left behind, and no one wants that. Hence our mission to connect to what's next, and that is what Retail Tomorrow is. But as a member-owned uh, association and a not-for-profit, we can't make that happen without the help of our sponsors. So I want to specifically call out today everybody here that's helped make this event possible, starting with our friends at Unilever. Allison has been, where's Allison? There's Allison. Allison is here on our friends at Unilever. They have been with us, they've been with us since the start when we contemplated retail tomorrow. Also, Microsoft and Starbucks here in Seattle. Mario, thank you, and, and I know we're going to see Ian later today, but thank you for your support of this platform. Also, Barrows, Stefan's here. Uh, Brand Innovators Labs, California Grocers Association, uh, Consumer Equity Partners, Tom Furby, thank you so much. Hallmark, uh, TNG, um, True Brands, I don't know if Jamie's here, he might still be downstairs, but True Brands, the coffee mugs you all received last night, thanks to our friends at True Brands. Kevin Coop and Morning Newsbeat, Kevin will be here uh, I think tomorrow um, or later today. Uh, Navajo, uh, Advantage, uh, Sales and Marketing, and LNR. So thanks to all of you for making this happen, for uh, supporting and sponsoring this event. Like I said, we couldn't do this without you, and uh, we're really excited for the um, for what we're going to uh, see in the next couple of days. Before I turn it over to Mark Sacone, just simply put, Retail Tomorrow, uh, and, and Trey and Mark will talk more about this, was born from the idea that, it, and it's a simple one, that we need to help our members connect to what's next what's coming, what we can't see yet, the innovation that will inform and define the future for our members and for the industry. And that's what we're about, and that's what we're trying to do here. So as you think about the things you see, and again, Mark will tee up some ideas and thoughts for you, but um, really it's, it's that simple. We want to help you connect to what's next. So I'm going to connect you all to what's next, which is Mark Saccone. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Seattle. Really looking forward to the next couple of days with you all. Uh, what we're going to do before we get on the bus uh, in about 45 minutes or so is kind of set the stage for you, okay? We want to talk to you a little bit about what Retail Tomorrow is, not everybody's familiar with it, and where we're going with it. Secondly, we want to do a deeper dive on the agenda, what we're going to do and why we're going to do it. Uh, so those are the two main things we want to do. But before we do those two things, the most important thing we have to do is introduce one another, okay? Now this is a big group, bigger than we typically have. And you, you wonder, is it, when does it get too big to do this? But it's never really too big for an event like this for us all because the magic is in the interaction. It's not necessarily what you're going to see, although I think it's going to be pretty damn good, but uh, hopefully. Uh, but it's really in, in the side conversations you have and, and what you're experiencing. So if you don't mind, I want to go around the room and have everybody stand up and project a little bit because we've got a fan that we can't shut off. Uh, it is a greenhouse. It is a green 
anything else we were told that. I just say who you are, what your organization is, and uh, what, your, what your job responsibility is, and then we'll go to the next person. So let's start at this table. Stand up somebody. I'm Bill Anderson, I work with HEB, and I'm accountable for all of our store operations. Good morning, everyone. Ron Fong, President and CEO of the California Grocers Association. Good morning, everyone. Kendra Doyle with Ralph's Grocery Company, and I handle uh, human resources and labor relations for the program. Good morning. Doug Schultz with the California Grocers Association as well. And you have a side conversation with Doug later. His grandfather, apparently, I just learned this last night, was one of the most famous, maybe the most famous rugby player in the history of the United States. Won two gold medals when it was an Olympic sport. And is an award man now. You're not having a conversation now. Right. Okay, <laughs> Richard. Uh, Richard Drager with Drager Supermarkets, uh, third generation owner, and do a lot of the operations. And his key, his supermarket in, in, in San Mateo is where Tom Brady used to shop. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Sam McLeod with Unilever. I work at our Customer Insight and Innovation Center, leading the Insight and Innovation Technology. Hi, I'm Alison Castillo with Unilever. I uh, lead our industry and customer. And Allison gives more than sponsorship money to this event. She gives thought pro content as well. And thank you for setting up the Starbucks experience with us. So every event we've had so far, Allison has helped put the content together. So All thank you. All about the coffee. All about the coffee. <laughs> 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 Scott, uh, oh, I'm sorry. 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 Uh, Ron Ansari, I'm with uh, Walmart. I lead the uh, innovation team uh, on emerging technologies at Walmart Labs in uh, Sunnyvale. Great. Great to have you. Uh, Scott Bradshaw, Executive Vice President of Sales for Bradshaw Home. Amy McInerney with Hallmark Cards, and I lead the industry development, and I am not a rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, I'm Greg Larson, Senior Director of Home and Home Product Development for the Motor Company. Scott Sullivan, Director of Ready Commerce and Formal Finance I'm Executive Vice President of TNG. We're a division of the Geopathy Group. Good morning. I'm Vince Burke. I'm the uh, partner with the BGJ Group. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Andres Mendoza Deja. I'm a partner with AT Gurney, a consulting firm. Uh, I'm Tom Furphy, uh, CEO of Construction Partners of Venture Partner and Sales. Much more on Tom later. Yes, you guys are. <coughs> you want to see me? Go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I, I just played a general direction. Uh, Mike Bloom, former CEO of Fred's Pharmacy, and uh, I think maybe retired, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, Monty Allmeyer, Senior Vice President, Logistics for TNG. Ed Mitchell, VP of Sales and Leader USA. Uh, whoops, <laughs> Brian and Murray, uh, president of uh, LNR, uh, distributors of beauty and GM products. Great, great, great supporter of GMDC. Thank yeah. you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Katachi from Whiteman's Food Markets, the director of health and beauty care and uh, responsible for wellness. And it's easy to get from Rochester to Seattle. Yeah, it's a okay. <laughs> you have the corporate, okay. corporate plane, right? Yeah, 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 I would. Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Mark Bodner, uh, CEO of uh, LNR Distributors. And, uh, Get to play in Riley's uh, Playhouse now. <laughs> Good morning, I'm John Castillo. I'm with Energizer Battery, or Household Products. I run U.S. grocery, sporting goods, electronics, because they all go together in military. <laughs> Good morning, Tom Moran, Advantage Solutions, and uh, I'm GM of uh, Health, Beauty, Wellness, the Emerging the Channel in Austin, Texas. Uh, Good morning, I'm Antonio Soto, and I am the of corporations and purchasing for Navajo Incorporated. 
Uh, Kirk Ben Rokel, Navajo Incorporated. I manage our health and beauty division. And a little bit of a cold, so I'll give you the fist bump today. <laughs> and an upgrade from Navajo versus Mark Duchel. Who couldn't be here? Yeah. Great to have you. Thank you. I'm William George. Uh, I'm the vice president of retail transformation for McKesson. I run a retail uh, incubation lab in Canada. Wow, fantastic. Great to have you. I'm Anna Brady. I'm the director of strategic initiatives for health and wellness at Shoppers Drug Mart in Lawful in Canada. Thank, thank you for being here. We're, we're now global. We have Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and McKelsey, of course. Yeah, this is the Canadian table, apparently. My name is Aliyah Karani. I'm in health and wellness strategy at Shoppers Drug Mart in Harrison Dean. I'm the chief client officer at Rug Dog. Good morning, I'm Lori Stillman with Advantage Solutions and I lead the analytics for the organization. Good morning, Bob Perry, I'm Twain Hart Market, CEO and President uh, of the beautiful Sierra Foothills. Uh, I'm also here representing CGA as Chairman of the Board this year. Great, great to have you. Good morning everybody, Mark Swedberg, Energizer Holdings, I lead our sales organization in North America and we'll talk rugby later. <laughs> that looks like a rug. Yeah, it looks like a rug. Hi, I'm Alexandra Barger from Mirasource Bergen, and I'm on the category management team for consumer products. Hi, Juliana Slavin, operations manager for the consumer product team with Mirasource Bergen as well. Hi, I'm Mari Zorodovich with uh, Microsoft, and I am the industry leader for retail CPG in our cloud uh, ecosystem. And Maria, thank you so much for tomorrow. I mean, she helped put together. We're all looking forward to that. It's, we know it's a spectacular experience, and it's all due to her doing. So, Honored to have you guys there. Uh, Les Hamilton, I'm the president of Highlands, and I manage all of our sales for us. John Beck with the Emerson Group, uh, sales management, health, and beauty care. And Jill Fitzgerald, the Emerson Group, and I lead our food concentrate. <laughs> Jamie Davis, uh, national sales manager for True Brands. Melissa McDonald, Director of Sales with Perigo. Hi, I'm Chris Calloway with Perigo. I lead our brand in sales again. Hi, I'm Edward Conway. I work with Highlands uh, and uh, Hamilton. Um, we, uh, I manage all of our uh, digital initiatives uh, from Amazon and e commerce business to our direct to consumer and technology, consumer facing technology platforms. Is that it? Great. Susan Finsley, Emerson. I work with the coach. Great, great to have you. I guess you don't need to go last. Seven Chain, VP Innovation Partnerships at uh, Barrows, Leaving Mark Beach. It's obviously a great group. Um, you can tell it's a great group, a lot of interest in this program today and tomorrow. And thank you all for coming. I want to turn it over to Trey Holder now, who's going to talk for a little bit about what retail tomorrow is, what we're trying to do with it, and where it's going. Okay? Thanks, Mark. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our third Retail Tomorrow Immersion. So excited to have everybody here. Lots of new faces in the room, so it's, it's been great to continue to build this community. Uh, ultimately, what I'd like to do is give a little background on Retail Tomorrow and kind of how we came into existence and why. Uh, as most of you know, G, uh, GMBC is the founder of Retail Tomorrow. When we created this platform a little over two years ago, the goal was to connect and expose the membership to innovation in retail, specifically focused on innovating the shopper experience. By doing that, we created an ecosystem of innovators across the country, uh, and we'll, some of them are helping us power the things that we do in these cities. So we go into cities and work with accelerators, and innovators, and venture capitalists, and all types of people. Uh, so it's been tremendous to see the excitement that we've been able to create. Immersions, education, and research is really at the core of what we do. When we do these immersions, our goal is to really get involved into the city. So work with the startup communities, go and do store tours, create great content, and then ultimately do workshops, which we'll do uh, tomorrow afternoon. <clears throat> Not only do we visit grocery stores, but we also like to visit stores in other genres. Really try to, everybody at the end of the day is still trying to solve for consumer engagement, and there's a lot to learn from other industries. We also include big companies like Microsoft, and uh, who we've partnered with before, and, and will continue to do in the future, and get their insights around innovation, where they think the puck is going, so to speak. That's for the Canadians in the room. Um, and then we work with a lot of the startup community, so listening to innovators talk about what they're doing to help power innovation in the retail space. 
And one of the big things that we always do is we ensure that we actually produce product at the end of this event. So after we do our hackathon workshop on Friday, which will be or Thursday, which will be facilitated by Barrows, we'll actually create a, a booklet or a work product that you can take back and share these insights with your organizations. And the last thing that we do is we really like to include innovation in other industries uh, to give us a greater perspective about what's happening. A lot of times we'll invite disruptors uh, to participate, and the goal is to really get away from groupthink and confirmation bias, which all of us can be guilty of. We also run headquarter events, so not only do we do these city immersions, but we can actually take the innovation to you. So we can uh, work with you around different hackathons or workshops where we focus on everything from blockchain to AI, the future of retail. Uh, we can do that for manufacturers, suppliers, and retailers. <clears throat> or we can just curate startups to come in and do a pitch day. Uh, when we do that, we typically focus on three buckets. One would be platform technologies to streamline operations. One would be kind of data, insight, AI, blockchain, and the last is consumer engagement buckets. So we'll bring uh, 15 companies in, five from each one of those buckets. Typically takes around six to eight hours. So I also wanna talk a little bit about the, some of the past events that we've done. It'll kind of give you a feel of how we got to where we are in the template that we're using today. <clears throat> the first event we ever had was actually in San Antonio at the JW Marriott. Um, where we had roughly 200 attendees and members of the HBW conference participate and listen to 10 different startups. These startups ranged from uh, CPG companies to retail tech platforms. In fact, uh, uh, Julia Cheek here from Everlywell uh, was one of our first presenters and, and really knocked it out of the park. And earlier this year, she actually got a deal on Shark Tank, so we were ahead of the sharks there, so that was kind of cool. <clears throat> We then decided we were gonna take the show on the road. Uh, Patrick likes to call it the circus, as he alluded to earlier. Uh, the first event we did was a little over a year ago. It was in Seattle. We really wanted to start out kind of the epicenter of innovation there. Uh, and that's where we created the template that we're using today. So we went and visited stores. One of the stores we visited was Drager. So if anybody ever gets a chance to visit the stores in San Francisco, they're beautiful, really amazing stores. He's right there on the epicenter of innovation. It has five-star restaurant in the, in the store and everything. So really neat stores. Then also saw some different stores out there uh, while we were there, and then went to Googleplex the next day, and they kind of gave us their insight around what they thought the consumer was going, where it was headed, and then we did a workshop facilitated by Grove Consulting. Uh, and we actually had one of the founders of Tesla uh, participate and actually speak for about an hour. We had to actually like close it down because everybody wanted to continue to listen to what he had to say. It was really, really exciting to listen to disruption from a different industry. We then emulated this exact same uh, template and New York partnered with Microsoft at the Retail Tech Center. Uh, also did store tours and, and a hackathon. That was the first hackathon that um, Barrows facilitated for us. We actually did a pitch competition at the end, which was, which was really neat and interactive for everybody. We have several upcoming events uh, in Toronto. We actually will be doing our first retail tomorrow week. So one of the things that we learned when Mark and I went and scouted Toronto was that the community is really hungry for innovation and we'll actually be getting even more engaged with the community. So we'll be doing an event on Thursday uh, where we'll actually invite about 300 innovators from the community to come and participate. And we'll be streaming that through Facebook Live and we think that the mayor may participate, although it's 18 days before the election. So I'm championing that this is a perfect prop form for this uh, election, but we'll see if we win him over. Uh, and then next week or next year, we will be doing uh, uh, LA Retail Tomorrow Week in March. Uh, we'll be doing Boston in May, same time period. And then we'll be going back to Toronto. Uh, Toronto really gives us that global touch and there's really some amazing things going on there. And, and Mark will touch on this a little bit more, but the other reason that Toronto is so exciting is they're really focused on smart city, on smart city and how commerce really engages with smart city. So lots to learn there. And then we also have other events. I mentioned the headquarter type events. We've got one coming up at Wakefern uh, in September. And then, you know, through the community that we've developed, we now are starting to do coffees and happy hours powered by the community that we're developing. So uh, May 31st, we'll be working with the Center for Advanced Retail Technology, or CART. Some of you guys may know who they are. Uh, and they're hosting a uh, happy hour uh, type of event uh, to just continue to aggregate uh, startups. So um, for those of you guys who have been on these uh, tours with us, I'm constantly be, being challenged by Mark Saccone to use a more endearing vernacular that I use with my friends. So without further ado, my homie Mark Saccone, can you take us <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to talk Seattle in a second, but we, we did want to just spend 30 seconds on our next event after this in Toronto. And uh, we were just blown away with what we saw up in Toronto. And uh, we'd love to talk to you more about it. But what, we, what we're planning to do is call it Innovating the Shopping Experience in this Connected City of the Future. And that title is triggered by a, a really interesting thing that Google is doing up there. You know, they broke Google apart to Alphabet, now the holding company, and they've got these various different little parts of it, uh, such as Waymo, you know, the self-driving vehicles, and Google itself, et cetera. And uh, they have one called the Sidewalk Labs. That's the part of Alphabet. And they, it was founded on the premise of, if we could, they don't use the word own, if we could run a city, what would it look like? If Google could run a city, what would it look like? And build it from the internet up. That's their, the way they think about it. And Toronto has given them a part of the city, not given, but there's a partnership here, to kind of build it from the internet up. And that's in the process of happening. It's now a brownfield, uh, apparently, but it's, it's going to be coming together in the next six months. And it'll have impact on everything we do, on healthcare, on, on the shopping experience, on transportation. And we want to use that as the backdrop. So we're going to have a session there. they will hopefully involve the mayor's office, Google Sidewalk Labs, MIT is going to come up and help us out because they have a, a whole shtick on this as well. And it'll be, uh, we think, of a really impactful event. But we're also going to, they have tremendous, tremendous innovation up there. MARS, which is, stands for Medical and Related Services. We want to put a healthcare element on this. It's a 1.5 million square foot facility. It's devoted to healthcare innovation, AI, and retail. They have a retail vertical in there as well. Uh, we're going to visit three provocative retailers, including Shopify, which is the largest Canadian online retailer. And we'd like to talk to you about what we could possibly do uh, with, the, with you guys. Uh, visit DMZ, the Digital Media Zone. Uh, this is the number one ranked university incubator in the world. Uh, Ryerson University, we, it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. We're going to create a pop-up store in there where we're going to have dinner. And uh, it will be, uh, we're going to have emerging technology in there, cryptocurrency, that's an exhibit, Microsoft with augmented reality. They've said that they would like to do something there with us. And they have some new consumer goods in there as well. Other experiences will include dinner, an experience at the Hockey Hall of Fame, so if you're, if you're a hockey fan, something at the aquarium, and possibly, and I don't want to get deeply into this because this may be a, the dumbest idea, but uh, some sort of a interaction with Second City Theater, the improv group, that could help our scenarios come alive. More on that tomorrow, you'll see what we're trying to do to make this as impactful as possible. So anyhow, keep that in mind. Sign up forms are out there, uh, but you know we have a lot of time before that event. Just wanted you to know that what's coming. So Seattle. Um, you know, we try to make these events as real time as possible. Uh, they don't exist in a vacuum, they exist in the external environment. And so, you know, I was thinking on the plane ride up, since our last event six months ago, what's happened in our industry? What's happened that might inform what we do with this event? And this is just, you know, Delta Airlines scribble, okay? But here's my list, and you'll have your own list, but just in the last six months. Uh, CVS and Aetna come together. Uh, CVS says, you know what, we need this to get another hook into the consumer and drive them into our stores. They have other reasons for doing it, but that's one of the reasons. How do I get people in my stores in this environment? Well, that is a, is a way to do it. Two days ago, or last week, as did Sainsbury say they're coming together. This is a way for Walmart to redeploy resources elsewhere. And what did we read yesterday? That they have intentions to spend $15 billion to take a 75% interest in Flipkart. In India. Now, Imran is saying it's not a done deal yet, etc. You think it's going to be a done deal, but $15 billion in what is considered to be the biggest e commerce opportunity in the world for an outside non, non um, local company to invest in is India. So there's a clear case of a company making choices on innovation. ASDA, limited upside potential, e commerce in India, big upside potential, $15 billion. So here we go. See you later. On the brand side, again, real time, just two days ago, Starbucks, they're going to get $7 billion, I think in cash if I'm not mistaken, from Nestle for the right to distribute their products at retail and mass channels so that Starbucks can invest in what they believe to be even bigger ideas, and one of which is the roastery, which you're going to see later. There's four or five of these in the world now. They'll blow you away with, with what they are. Is that me? <laughs> oh, God, do I hate that. That's right. I hate, I hate guys like me. 
Like, just hate him. He's my daughter, actually. Uh, shame on me. Um, so many other rumors on M&As, but we'll just leave it at what's really out there in the public domain. Amazon, we could spend a whole, you know, session on just what's going on with Amazon, but I don't call the Whole Foods acquisition real time because that happened nine months ago, not six months ago, but we're beginning to see it in the marketplace with pricing and other moves. Amazon, they now have over 500,000 employees, second largest employer in the country. Uh, and these are not just fulfillment center people. You're gonna see when we go to Amazon Go, all kinds of new buildings, and those aren't fulfillment workers there. Tom, you were saying that the average, Tom Furphy was saying that the average salary for the, these workers that are working down there is $205,000. And you know, Facebook got a lot of publicity just recently that said that their average salary was $200,000, and you know, Amazon fulfillment centers, uh-uh, these are high paid people. And I know in my hometown of Boston, and if you're familiar with the Seaport District, which is a big, big area, um, Amazon just bought a, an 18 story building to be totally filled with people working on voice recognition and robotics with an option on an adjacent 18 story building. That's 4,000 people and they're not, they're not, they're not warehouse workers. Uh, Amazon, Amazon Go opens up to the public. You're gonna see it in a, in a little bit. Amazon Key is expanded so that now they can deliver to your trunk un car unattended. Go figure. Uh, I'm gonna throw out Kima, or as it's pronounced, Huma, for 500 Retail Tomorrow crypto coins as a prize. Who can tell me what Hema is? And Stefan, don't say anything. H-E-M-A. -E okay. Allison? Uh, the store in, in Shanghai, or the first store from Alibaba that executed the yeah. last. They're rolling out, they've announced that they're gonna roll out 60, Alibaba, 60 brick and mortar stores and these aren't Amazon Go 1,000 square foot stores. These are 100,000 square foot big markets with 100 people eating, et cetera. Um, and we're gonna show you a little film on that later, but they plan to open 60 stores. This is not a one-off, this is not a concept store, and they're doing really well. And uh, so they make my list of what's been happening in the last six months. And this, you talk about omni-channel, this will, this will blow you away. Um, and it, but it's not all sex and guts and glory and fancy stuff last six months, Lidl. Lidl, big splash, right? They're going to come in the market. Everybody lowers their prices. What's happening with Lidl now? Well, school's out. I mean, are they, you know, they're saying they're retrenching. Uh, they're not going to open as many stores. They're going to go after a different consumer than they went after before. And so maybe, maybe you know, they'll, they'll, it'll, they'll make it all work. Is this another Tesco and, and, and Fresh and Easy? Another European retailer coming in that kind of misread the market? Nobody knows a time of flux. And in my top list, uh, the final one I'll give here, it's for context, is for brands, which is the world I come out of, big brands, particularly. Um, there, there's some disillusionment over something that they've had no disillusionment over uh, in the past, and that's di the digital media. And you may have heard about this or read about it, but all of a sudden they're beginning to doubt that they're getting the bang for their buck from digital media. Uh, there's all kinds of tough, eyeball to eyeball, well-publicized, tense conversations with the Facebooks of this world and the Googles, saying, you know what, your metrics aren't right. There's no accountability, there's no transparency, and if you're a P&G, you say, I'm cutting $200 million from my digital advertising budget, and I'm gonna redeploy it somewhere else, into influencer networks, and something like that, whatever. But just, you know, this is the first time I've seen so openly challenged the panacea, or the, you know, the holy grail of digital media. And uh, that doesn't mean it's not gonna continue to take off, and maybe this is just a negotiating thing, or who knows, but for the first time, it's, it's come out of the closet, and, it, and it's fairly public, so I think it's something to keep our eyes on. So that's, that's the, you'll all have your own list, and I hope you talk about it on the bus, and over dinner, and over drinks, but that's the environment that we're working on right now. It's a dynamic environment, there's a lot of change going on, and we hope that these events are real time and address those kinds of things you see in the marketplace. So what are we gonna do in Seattle? What are we gonna do for the next couple of days? Well, first of all, as Trey said, we like to build store tours into every one of these. And, uh, and so for the, you know, in a, in a way, what better place than Seattle to address what we're calling the uh, omni-channel event? And we're, just to give you a little bit of background, we are defining omni-channel as having three components, okay? Just so we're all, you know, transparent on this. One is the in-store experience. How can we drive traffic into the store? 
okay? Secondly, online. What can we do to build our online business? And third, how can we synergistically do both? So we're gonna explore all three of those at various points of the next two days. Some in isolation, then we're gonna to try to bring it all together at the end. So for the brick and mortar experience, for the in-store piece, uh, you know, when you, when you think of Seattle, you think of e-commerce and you think of Amazon, but over the, our generation, Seattle has kind of been the epicenter of creating the in-store experience that we know today. Costco headquartered here with the treasure, okay? Going back 25 years or so. Nordstrom's with the services and the pianos and all that stuff for the department store channel. Starbucks that taught us that coffee isn't just a product, it's an experience. It's a retail experience. All of those headquartered here in Seattle. So we've picked three that we think kind of tell different stories in this omni-channel journey that we're on. The Starbucks Roastery, of which there are, are four in the world. We're gonna go into one of them. The one that even leapfrogs this one. Is anybody from Starbucks, Starbucks here yet? I guess, I guess we're gonna join them in a little bit. But there's one that even leapfrogs this, it's in Shanghai. Stefan, I don't know if you've seen the video of that. I got it. I had it in case you didn't. But this this takes what you're going to see, and again, Alibaba is behind the one also in Star in, in Shanghai. And they've added a technology element that you're not going to see here. But without technology, this is a, this is a jaw dropper. Then we're going to go to the Amazon Go store, and you've heard a lot about it. You've read about it. You might have seen it on YouTube. Whatever. It's not big. It's not much bigger than this room. But the technology behind it is really. It's really worth thinking about, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about what it is later, uh, as best that we can tell, and whether it's scalable, et cetera. Uh, and that'll be on the way, right across from it, is something called the Amazon Ecosphere. And it just opened up uh, last month. It's a place where Amazonians, I think that's what they're called, right, Tom? Um, do uh, I, innovation. It's a, kind of a tropical environment that is really kind of interesting. You're not allowed in as an outsider, but you kind of peer in, and there is a space at the bottom that kind of gives you a little bit of an orientation. So we'll walk over to that. Although Brendan was saying it looks like some weather moved in here, but it's only 50 yards away. And so that plus Amazon Go, we want to immerse you in the Amazon culture as best we can. So that this, that's part of it. Then REI, it's our headquarters store. Uh, it's the, the top five TripAdvisor tourist attractions in Seattle, and it's quite an immersive experience. Um, what we might do if we have time is what, as we drive to Galvanize, which I'll tell you about in a second, there's one other thing that's worth looking at here, many things in Seattle, um, and that is the Amazon Fresh Terminal. And that is, and that's, this isn't curbside pickup, this is a, a freestanding terminal. There's only two in the country. Amazon's got one here, and I believe uh, Walmart's got one in Arkansas, where it's, you, you know, I, I ran, I actually shopped there when I visit my, I have a daughter that moved to France six months ago, go figure. And this is how they shop in France. I mean, they, you, you go to the market, you get your produce, etc. But for most of your staples now, you're going to these terminals. This is the French one, where you just order ahead a little bit, as if it were curbside pickup, but it's a, it's, a, it's a terminal that you go to. And these things, the, the cars are backed up coming in. It's, it's really quite a thing. We'd like to do a drive-by, if we can, to the Amazon terminal here. Again, so you just get a full picture of what Amazon is, is, is all about. Um, then we're going to end up at Galvanize. Galvanize is a shared workspace. It's not an accelerator. Those of you that were in San Francisco with us, we went to Plug and Play, which is an accelerator that mentors and even invests in startups. This is more of a shared workspace like we work that houses many, many uh, startups. And we're going to have pitches. We've gotten good feedback from past events. <coughs> Our attendees like these demo day pitches. These are startups. They've been curated, I think are relevant for our theme here, and they're about 10 minutes each. They're young people, they're full of piss and vinegar, and then we go on to the next one, okay? Everybody's younger than me. Then we're gonna have a session I'm really looking forward, I'm looking forward to all of this, but we're calling this Amazon Unplugged. And this is going to consist of Tom Furphy and five other ex-Amazonians uh, who are now working with re retailers such as yourself to try to understand where all of this is going, what did they learn at Amazon, and, and how you can build your business. And what's, what I love about this panel is, these are six people, it's six or five times. Well, it's actually gonna be four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> all, 
all that time. <laughs> real time, real time. <laughs> but one has to go back at the terminals. <laughs> so there's, they're, they're, these are people that are not consultants. They're not futurists. Nothing against those, those brands of people. Um, but they are practitioners. They came from your business. They came, they, Tom uh, started at Wegmans. He was an executive at Wegmans. In fact, I think, Mike, did your wife work in his department? At, I think she at did. Wegmans, yeah, years and years ago. And then he went to startup. He'll tell more about himself in, in, in Palo Alto. And it started. He started the consumer goods business for Amazon. So this is all your fault. Yeah. This is all your fault. And you've got uh, on your panel somebody who used to work for H E B, Central Markets, uh, uh, Whole Foods, and I think Albertsons. So these are these are people that sat in your chair before and know have seen both sides. So I'm really looking forward to that. Then we have a dinner at a, a great place, Aqua, and we can maybe steal away and watch the uh, Celtics eliminate the 76ers. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Nick Foles, I don't want to hear about then tomorrow, we're going to go to the Microsoft Retail Experience Center. Again, thank you for, this is, by all reputes, a really, really memorable experience. We're going to get Microsoft's take on well, omni-channel, in-store, online. I'm told that there are going to be nine or ten startups that are going to be scattered throughout that we're going to be able to talk to. So that, that's outstanding. Um, and then uh, we're going to have a panel, a panel discussion on, on, on what you've seen. We'll have a tour. Then we're going to have a podcast. And that will be Kevin Coop from Morning uh, uh, Drug uh, Morning Newsbeat. He's going to he's a partner with us. He's going to have a, a discussion that'll be streamed live. And I believe that well, the, the topic is investing in innovation. What are the economics of innovation? And that's something we all really need to have to consider. And then we're going to have we're going to conclude with a three-hour session where we bring it all together, an omni-channel hackathon. And we'll explain more about that. But that's what we're going to bring together in a kind of an imaginative way. A, a product that you can take back and, uh, and, and, and share with the folks back on the ranch. Here's what it's all about, here's what we learned, and here's what the consensus was, what the Andy Charm of the future shopping experience is going to look like. Um, and then we'll have a farewell happy hour and uh, shake hands and, 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 and wish you well. So what we hope you're going to get out of this is um, a couple of things. Number one, you're going to have access to thought leadership from big companies such as Microsoft, Starbucks, Amazon through ex-employees and REI. I would probably put them up there as well. You're going to be exposed to 15 different startups. Not that necessarily you're going to invest in them, but this kind of gives you a window into, into what the startup community thinks is relevant for Omnichannel, what they think is right for our business. And I, every big company has got a venture group that's looking at startups like this. And, uh, and so we want, we, we want you to get a look at that. And finally, you're going to walk away with a product that uh, will be useful to you, a booklet, a digital uh, kind of uh, execution as well that will kind of encapsulate what we did. So that's kind of where we're going. That's what this is all about. And uh, again, you know, forget all of this. If we just were in a bus together getting off and just talking to each other about, about these things, it could be a great event as well. So really, it's all about the energy that, that, that we, we get in the room. So I'm going to dismiss you in about two minutes but before I do that, because we'll take about you know, 10, 15 minutes and then meet for the bus at about quarter to two, okay? Uh, but I wanted to leave you with, you know, a, a couple of thoughts. Questions you might want to be asking yourself throughout the day. And these are questions we kind of asked ourselves as we put this event together. And again, I would, the way I would phrase those questions would be, first of all, in the area of omni-channel, a couple of questions obvious questions. Question number one, how do I drive people into the store in this environment and is that fundamentally going to change in the future? Does the in-store experience have to change somehow in the future in order to do that? Second question, how do I maximize my online capabilities? Because that's where the puck is going. We all see the numbers every year. That keeps growing. How do I maximize that? And thirdly, how do I do both together if I'm into on the channel? Not everybody is, but those that are. How do they work in synergy? How can I use the, uh, the internet to drive business into the stores and vice versa? Okay, all questions to, to contemplate. Secondly, at a very much higher level, this kind of a subtext to everything we're gonna do. 
how do I find innovation and where do I find it? And how do I integrate it into my company? How do I assess its potential? How do I not go up down a, a blind alley and waste a lot of money and time? What's the right way to do this? Okay. Thirdly, in terms of my strategy, do I, do I need to reframe who I am and what I am? Maybe you don't. It's just a question to ask yourself. I'll give you a couple of examples. Google, at our first event in the Googleplex, they said, you know what? You think of Google, this is Google, not Alphabet, as a search company. We're not a search company anymore. We're an artificial intelligence company. So they've reframed internally and externally who they are. I'll give you another example. I've heard Walmart people say this, I don't know if it's, if it's a credo that everyone accepts, but I've seen it in public utterances, is that we are not a retailer, we are a technology platform that happens to have a lot of stores. And I thought, that's an interesting way to reframe the business that we're in. It refocuses where the potential is, and what we've got to work on, and how we're going to build the business in the future. So whether you're a retailer, big or small, a brand, big or small, or somebody else in the industry, you know, does who I think I am and who I am right now, does that need to not necessarily totally change, but do I at least have to reframe it? Do I have to think about myself a little bit differently? Um, final question. And again, I go back to Google uh, and our day out there. I asked a question that really resonated with a lot of people and asked themselves since. If I were starting my business today, what would it look like? Would it look like what I have, or would it look like something different? Now, we all have legacy businesses, and we're not going to blow that up. You know, we have to maybe migrate to a different place. But there a, comes a time and a place where you ask yourself the question, as part of a, an event like this, if I were starting it all over again, based on what I've seen, what would it look like? And with that kind of as a North Star, maybe that helps you migrate to, to where you need to be. I know Patrick, GMDC, your board, has challenged you to reinvent who you are. Right. You're, there are people in this room who really went eyeball to eyeball with GMDC and said, you got to rethink the trade association model. Uh, start with a white sheet of paper. So you know, they're living their own lesson here with, with the message that we're trying to give you. So those are some of the questions you should be asking yourself. We're going to push you throughout this event. We're going to keep asking these questions. And, uh, and so that's really all I want to say right now. Do we have any questions? about what we're doing or why we're doing it? If not, let's declare this part of the meeting closed. Let's take up about 15 minutes and meet to, at the front, Brenda, at quarter to nine, to go to the Rose Street. Okay, see you there.